Hi guys. I wanted to take a moment and give you some instruction as to how to move forward with your literary analysis essays that we have been working on in class. So as you know, my expectations for you today was to have your introduction finished as well as color coded. And if you go to my example that I gave you the other day, this means actually color coding each one of those sections. Today we'll be talking about moving into the body of our essays, but first I want to go over a few points with introductions to make sure that those introductions really meet the standards of senior level essay writing. So in the announcement that I gave you today, as far as subnotes and everything like that, you'll see this link for writing introductions. This is a big piece of text, so what I really want you to do is just focus on the section strategies for writing an effective introduction as well as the section five kinds of less effective introductions. Now, I'm not going to go too much into detail here because I want to give you guys a chance to actually read through this on your own and I don't want to be repeating everything that you'll read, but to give you a little bit of a summary of what goes into an effective introduction, you really want to pull your reader in with an attention grabbing sentence and some information that's going to make them care about why they should be reading your piece. So if you notice over here we have an intriguing example, a provocative quotation that is closely related to your argument, a puzzling scenario, a vivid and perhaps unexpected and question. So all of these are really interesting ways to pull your reader in. Now, I won't touch too much more on introductions because I will be popping into your documents throughout this week, through the remainder of this week, and giving you feedback on your introductions and eventually your body paragraphs as well. So we're going to go ahead and move into how to structure the body paragraph of your literary analysis. So in, if you go to where I had you put your literary analysis submissions, I have added this example of the lit analysis body examples. So if you notice up here, I've ha I have my introduction. So in the same document that you have been writing in, I do want you to go ahead and uh, s step away from the introduction section. You can still leave it color coded. I just removed my colors, um, such as what you see here in this one, so that you could focus on the body paragraph. So please go ahead and do leave those colors in there and everything. But I do want you to mark that this is clearly your introduction and this and here is where we're moving into your body paragraph. Eventually we'll remove these titles, these subtitles, but just for organizational purposes now we're going to keep them on. So as you can see I've already done all the color coding and everything like that for my body paragraphs and if you go down here to the bottom I've explained how each one is color coded. Now let me explain this outline setup. Ma your main point is always going to be that first sentence of your paragraph. Sometimes you can have a transition sentence that's leading into that main point, but it should really be the first or second sentence of your paragraph. It doesn't belong anywhere else uh, at this point in your paragraph. The reason why you have that main point is because it's easy for your reader to follow. They have just come out of your introductory paragraph where they're seeing your thesis statement and what they expect for you to argue throughout your paper. And for your reader to stay easily focused on what you're writing and your argument, that main, that main point being that first sentence of your next paragraph and your following paragraph and so forth is so that they know, okay, this part, this point is supporting the thesis statement and here's how I can examine it further. So that main point needs to stay there. Now your textual evidence to support your main point. As you see in my second paragraph, I immediately have that follow my main topic sentence and that's pretty normal. But you can also advance that writing a little bit too. Where you, and, and I also did it here, but in between my textual evidence here and my textual evidence here, I have a little bit of interpretation before moving into my second piece. Now if you remember, I did only ask you to include one piece of textual evidence for each main point. But I want to go down here into this textual evidence explanation. So as you see here, where I've noted textual evidence to support your main point, 
I've mentioned this can be in a direct quote, paraphrased, or summarized. Because this is a shorter paper, I suggest specifically using direct quotes. Now, direct quotes are what you have here, okay? And a summarization is more along the lines of, of what you have here. So let's go ahead and go through this first paragraph. So if you remember, my thesis statement was, by investing in the emasculation of men as represented through the character of Winston, 1984 dismantles the power of human individualism, therefore creating a larger, more powerful, and discreet government control by breaking down the pride of each individual. So my main point following that thesis statement that I really want to touch base on is, though Orwell projects a future society in 1984, traditional gender roles are assumed throughout the book. Most male characters are met in work environments, while female characters are often portrayed through some reference of their bodies. So my main topic sentence that I'm going for here is this argument of how we're looking at Winston in this traditional gender role. Not saying that you have to be confined by these gender roles, but in the 1984 book, we are, I would absolutely argue that we're working with traditional gender roles here. So that's my main point. And I want to pull my reader into that, explaining how I'm going to build that into my argument. So if you look after I have made that main point, I give some examples. And that's where you can see this use of the colon coming in. So how a colon can work, a, col a colon can work in multiple ways. But the best way to think of a colon in grammar is that it is introducing something. So it can be introducing a list, it can be introducing an idea, it can be introducing information that's going to further, further support the first point made. So because my main topic sentence here is about traditional gender roles, I'm using a colon here to go ahead and show how women in 1984 have been per portrayed through some reference of their bodies. So you see here where I've summarized. I don't have direct textual evidence, but I've summarized where we see this through the book. So Mrs. Parsons with her children, the prostitute as she provides a service to Winston, Catherine and her regular reference to, the, to their duty to the party, and Julia, whose method of corrupting the party is through sexual acts with party members. So therefore, I've used that colon and that textual summarization to further support my main point as to how we're seeing traditional gender roles in this book and how women are seen through this angle. So then I move into, as you see, the, my blue is this interpretation of textual evidence. So I've introduced this idea where we've seen where each time we've met a woman, she is, it's in some reference to her body. So I want to further interpret that for my readers. So here I have, Therefore, if traditional roles are up upheld in 1984, it is assumed Winston is the breadwinner for his household. Yet the circumstances of his living space and lifestyle suggest mediocre wages and a struggle to survive. So here I'm saying, okay, if, if we're working in traditional gender roles in 1984 and women are holding this role, then I'm going to assume and argue that therefore Winston is holding this role. So even though it doesn't say in 1984 that Winston is the breadwinner, because of the gender roles being established in 1984, I'm going to argue that he's following a traditional gender role. So here I am again using a colon because I've introduced this idea of Winston being the breadwinner. So now I want to include this piece of textual evidence that is going to support my argument and how he is the breadwinner and how he is not that necessarily allow him to be a breadwinner. So you can look at my textual evidence here where I say he was aware that there was no food in the kitchen except a hunk of dark colored bread which has got to be saved for tomorrow's breakfast. Notice this is a direct quote so I actually cited it with last name and page number. There's no comma in between. Remember MLA in text citations. This is the setup for it. So here's my textual evidence where I'm showing that he doesn't have food. So I want to further explain this because if I didn't take the time to further explain this, people would say, okay, well, where are you going with this? This doesn't make sense. So anytime that you use that textual evidence in your writing, you need to explain 
what you're doing with it. So textual evidence is there to support your argument. It is not there to make your argument for you. It's there to support it. So if you can't explain how that textual evidence that you chose is supporting your main idea or supporting your thesis statement or supporting your argument, it doesn't belong in your paper and you need to pick something different. Now, like I said, going back to this, um, here is my textual evidence here. So I need to further explain how it makes my main point. So here I say, if Winston worked in an affluent job or even a job providing a stable income, he would not have to skip dinner to ensure he would have breakfast. If one defining aspect of manhood in traditional male gender roles is the ability to provide, Winston falls short in providing for himself, let alone having the resources to provide for a family. So you see here that I'm not only explaining how that piece of textual evidence supports my argument, I'm also explaining where I'm going with this and I'm making my own interpretations. So if you remember when I introduced this paper, I said that literary analysis, your literary analysis essay needs to be creating conversations. And it doesn't need to be statements that are like, well, duh, that's happening. They need to be strong statements really showing how you're analyzing and interpreting a text. Which is what I'm saying here, where I'm saying, you know, if Winston is supposed to be the breadwinner of his family and he can't even give himself food, then, and he can't even provide for himself, then he's not even, how is he able to provide for a family? So I've included that interpretation and that analysis here. And then outline where I, where my last point is explain how textual evidence supports your main point in thesis statement. What I have here so far is, so in orange, I have my main point, my top, my main topic sentence. I have my textual evidence. I have my interpretations and analysis of that textual evidence. Now I need to fully finish explaining how that information supports my, my thesis statement. So I've, I've looked at the gender roles of women. I've looked at how the no food in the kitchen kind of supports this idea of or, or further interprets this idea of Winston having this breadwinner role, now I need to say what that information means for my thesis statement. How does that information support my thesis statement that Winston is emasculated in this society? So here I am directly referencing my thesis statement. Since this society does not work to provide productive, financially opportun opportunistic, and meaningful jobs for its citizens, specifically the breadwinners, the lack of income itself emasculates Winston, taking away his sense of self-worth and pride. So there at the end of my, sen of my paragraph, I'm able to come back to my thesis statement. And that's what you need to be able to do with, e with your main points. You need to bring them back to your thesis statement and keep that flow consistent throughout your paper as to how this information comes back to your thesis statement, why it matters, and how it further builds your argument. So let's go ahead and move into paragraph two. So this one is a much smaller paragraph, um, a little simpler in explaining everything. So let's look at my main topic sentence. Winston's self-worth and pride are further compromised by his poor health, which often causes a limp and constant pain for Winston. So not only am I using my main topic sentence to move into my next point, I'm also using a transition here. When I say Winston's self-worth and pride are further compromised, I'm coming back to this last sentence where I just said his sense of self-worth and pride. So by bringing that into the second paragraph, I have an easy flow here where my reader can easily track how my argument is evolving. And th but I'm also moving into my next point. My next point is going to be about how his poor health also emasculates him. So here I am using my textual evidence. He frequently suffers varicose ulcers and a bad cough. So I'm giving information here again where I'm kind of summarizing his health. So once again, I'm using a colon where there's direct textual evidence that further supports the statement that I just made. More where I say, moreover, his varicose ulcer had begun itching unbearably. And then I cite that. So now I'm moving into my interpretation of that information. So I made this statement that Winston's health does not, or emascul is part of emasculating him and taking apart his self-worth and pride. 
now I need to interpret that because I included this how so what I need to explain to my readers is how I took that text and I interpret it for my main point so you see here in traditional gender roles strength is often associated with men while weakness is often associated with women once again this is not what I believe or anything like that but this is what I'm getting from the text though Winston possesses traditional masculine skills such as knowledge of how to fix a clogged pipe his consistent references to his health and pain illustrate how Winston is not in good health and does not have much strength. So what I did here was I made this statement that his poor health is this further emasculation of him. But someone might say, well, how do you figure? Because people can just end up being in bad health. So how I further explained that was I said, okay, oftentimes if we're working in traditional gender roles, Women are defined by weakness. You know, they need a man to help them do this or a man to help them do this. And men are supposed to rep represent that strength. But Winston doesn't have that strength. His health prevents him from having that strength. Therefore, I'm moving into my ex explanation of how that textual evidence supports my main point and thesis statement. So I'm saying, his lack of strength further emasculates Winston, where he is not only able to, or where he is not only unable to financially make, make his way, but his broken body cannot meet his needs either. So um, there's much more evidence that I could provide in all of this, but I just wanted to focus on those two main points. So that's what I'm asking you to do in your body paragraphs. Now, what I would like you to do with today uh, by next class and a little bit of class time today is build these body paragraphs with these main topic sentences um, all of these outline points here okay use your neighbors too to reference or to kind of see what you're doing and see if you're doing it right that does not mean use your neighbors to talk to each other and have conversations that don't have anything to do about this um, so please, I don't mind you using your neighbors, but please make sure that you're using them to further improve your writing and not just have conversations. All right. Now that is kind of my spiel on body paragraphs. So that should give you a good starting point. So let me kind of explain my role and my um, expectations for next class and everything like that. So because you're starting into your body paragraphs and hopefully hopefully have revised a little bit of your introduction by um, these points in the introduction uh, information, I will be jumping into your documents and giving you feedback on those introductions. And if you have enough in your body, then I'm going to go ahead and start giving you feedback on that as well. My expectations for next class towards your literary analysis are, is that you have your body paragraphs complete with all of um, highlight and everything like that so you can pick your colors. Um, you just need to have this body line at the bottom that says what you've colored each one. So I know to look for that and I know that you understand that. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to email and I will get to them as soon as I possibly can. Um, if you have any questions about any other assignments, still, still feel free to email me. All right, guys, I will see you when I return from the conference. I hope you found this information useful. All right. Bye.